So hello everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, I would like to inform you that today's session is going to be recorded uh, for reference purposes and because some parts of it uh, will be uploaded on our Moodle platform and YouTube channels. Uh, we'll also take some screenshots, uh, but we kindly ask you to leave your cameras open and name yourselves if it is possible. Uh, with your name, surname, and your organization's name. I'm Katarina, and I'm working as project manager for Hellenic Adult Education Association. Uh, today's, today's webinar is organized by Hellenic Adult Education Association in cooperation with the European Adult Education Association uh, in the framework of the Regala project. Uh, Tina is here and uh, she's uh, our host today. <laughs> uh, thank you, Tina. Uh, so, uh, Regale uh, is a key Action 3 Erasmus Plus project uh, that aims to increase the impact and uh, sustainability of uh, regional uh, and local uh, adult education organizations uh, by setting up or reinforcing uh, networks among them and uh, with uh, regional uh, or local authorities. Uh, the most significant project outcome uh, will be an increase uh, of uh, the partners' capacity and of their target group's members uh, to respond to their challenges, uh, to build cooperation structures and promote uh, an adult education culture in cities and uh, uh, regions. Uh, today, uh, we're going to discuss about learning cities, uh, the goals, uh, the cultural and educational obstacles of the development of a Greek learning city, and especially about the example of uh, Larissa Learning City. Uh, Mr. Alexis Kokos and Mr. Dmitris Delianis um, will be here with us today. Uh, Mr. Alexis Kokos is an uh, emeritus professor of adult education in the Hellenic Open University. He is a chairperson of the Hellenic Adult Education Association and uh, he was the scientific uh, responsible of uh, Larissa Learning City. Uh, Mr. Dmitri Delianis is the vice major, uh, mayor of the uh, municipality of Larissa and a professor uh, consultant at the um, Hellenic Open University. Uh, he was uh, the deputy mayor for social policy and chairman of the committee for the Larissa Learning City, uh, for which the city of Larissa was awarded um, uh, at UNESCO 2017. Uh, also, Mr. Giorgos Plausidis will be with us. He's a professor at the Hellenic Open University and the scientific supervisor of the Greek part of the Regale project. Um, and he was uh, working uh, as uh, secretary general for many municipalities uh, in northern Greece. Um, and uh, extensively, he worked uh, in uh, supporting the municipality of Fermi in becoming a member of uh, uh, the UNESCO Global Learning Cities Network. So uh, I will give the floor to Mr. Alex Kokos. Well, good morning, everybody. Thank you for this invitation. And uh, let me upload my slides. Okay, so uh, it is a joint uh, presentation from uh, Dimitri Velianis and myself. I will start uh, exploring three issues. Uh, the first issue is uh, how we identify a learning city, its concept, uh, goals and reality. And the second issue is uh, the culture and education obstacles the project of uh, Learning Cities uh, faces. 
And the third issue is the particular challenges facing Larsa Learning City. And uh, after my presentation, Dimitris Deligianis will uh, present uh, more concretely what is happening in, in Larsa Learning City. So uh, the Learning City is a, a UNESCO project emphasizing lifelong learning and the objective is to enhance economic development, achieve environmental progress, and enhance social life and equality in cities. There is a intense sensitivity as regards the social ex socially excluded groups. Of course, the different cities choose their version of how to become a learning city, and in the end of analysis, how they understand the learning city. UNESCO, through its uh, Institute of Lifelong Learning, which is the umbrella, sponsors the Learning City project and supports the notion that uh, living, surviving, and well-being depend on citizens' learning. However, there are many challenges as regards the learning cities in general. Uh, I think that the most important challenge is that too often lifelong learning offers a future as economic success and prosperity. Of course, we do not deny the economical aspect, but on the other hand, the great risk is that in a world of inequality, the entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial version of lifelong learning will reproduce inequality. That is why we are quite skeptical of forms of education that reduce learning to the instrumental and reduce cities only to economic entities and learners to consumers of learning. That is why we believe that a more critical vision, and if you like, a, a more global, a more integral vision of learning is necessary. One that offers not only economic development, but something more. There must be on democracy, justice, care, social justice, and equality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so we strongly believe that a learning city should expand opportunities for critical, emancipatory and transformative learning that supports urban development. A revitalized learning city can foster policies and interventions that could transform the urban environment and support healthy living. Moreover, a learning city may also offer citizens an opportunity to learn how to live together with diversities in a non-violent, congenial ways that are conductive to human flourishing. This group might even be called emancipatory urban development through critical pedagogy of the city. Now I go on with uh, my main issue that regards the obstacles that uh, the learning cities face. And then I will pass more concretely to, to Larissa. A, a learning city in general, in the process of fulfilling its goals, often has to deal with obstacles owed to many factors such as institutional, financial, administrative, or managerial. However, probably the most important obstacles are deeper and have to do with cultural and educational factors. For example, the hegemony of a social cultural environment that resists change as well as the inability to recognize the value of emancipatory learning. 
These are indeed crucial regressive learning traditions. That is why now I will explore the characteristics and the function of these crucial obstacles within the context of Greek society, and more specifically, the city of Larissa, a city of 200,000 residents situated in a rural area of central Greece. Let me first explore the traditional social culture in Greece. Well, a, a, a great number of uh, political scientists and social psychologists agree that in Greece, traditional social culture remains significantly strong, especially in communities like Larissa, where the traditional experiences, values, and perspectives of rural life are still preserved by the population. This traditional culture is characterized by introversion and mistrust towards innovation, change, and collective effort. The satisfaction of personal expectations and pursuits is a fundamental characteristic and creates strong bonds with a small number of people, the so-called so in-group, among whom a relationship of interdependence exists. What is the in-group? The creation of in-groups has its roots in the centuries when Greeks were vassals of the Ottoman Empire. People trying to survive under extremely difficult, difficult uh, circumstances were obliged to develop strong interdependence with the nuclear family, within the nuclear family, as well as with people they trusted, of course, such as relatives, friends, friends of friends, as well as political friends. Social behavior was strongly dependent on whether the other person was a member of the in-group or the out-group. A great deal of commitment and solidarity existed between in-group members. On the contrary, the relations with out-group members were characterized by suspicion and antagonism and their influences were rejected. The commitment and the interdependence of people within in-groups and their competitiveness towards out-groups still constitute basic aspects of Greek social reality and explain a great deal of citizens' behavior. For many Greeks, participation in synergies and collective actions based on a consent that occurs through a process of discourse constitutes an endeavor that is quite outside their frame of reference. A great deal of the adult population, including, of course, Larissa's, is not interested in reforms that are for the sake of the social community or the socially vulnerable people, as they do not belong to a familiar in-group. The major concern often is the main maintenance of the interests of each one's in-groups. Well, of course, on the other hand, there's a kind of um, of challenge as regards the traditional culture. Over the years, a new alternative reformist culture has emerged against the traditional one, 
it's primarily draws from the uh, ideals of enlightenment and political liberalism. It has a positive stance regarding reformations with a democratic prospect, and it aims at decreasing the power of clientelism and corporatist practices. People who adopt this culture are inspired by the model of a responsible citizen who contributes toward social development and economic growth. Accordingly, a city like Larsa should pursue by activating the creative social forces which adopt the reformist culture, pursue the transformation of the dominant traditional social culture. This is, of course, a task which is not at all easy. There are many, many resistances. But on the other hand, there are some forces, perhaps not um, the stronger ones in the Greek uh, social reality, but there are uh, also some reformist forces, and it is always a grand affair between the traditional culture and the, uh, let's say, the more creative uh, culture. Now, let me pass to the second main obstacle that regards the, cult, the lack of culture and expertise in adult education. In the Greek society, there is a very low level of understanding that adult education could significantly contribute to the financial, social, and cultural growth as well as to the personal development of learners. Uh, for instance, an OECD report showed that Greece is classified in the last category of the member states of the organization concerning this issue. The lack of adult education culture is identified indicatively in a research by the Hellenic Federation of Enterprises, finding that 50% of enterprises do not wish to pursue educational activities. And there are many other reports that show the lack of expertise and expertise on adult education and training. Of course, there are exceptions, but this is the big picture. The reasons. The reasons of the lack of adult education culture and expertise are associated with the way the system of adult education has been structured in Greece. Until the beginning of 80s, there were rare adult education activities because the country had gone through prolonged periods of dictatorship and reactive, very reactive governance, as well as due to the depression of civil society. In 1981, Greece, for the first time in modern history, elected a social democratic government that expressed the aspirations of citizens for a new life. An extended movement of popular education occurred. However, the boost of its expansion came mainly from the state's intervention. That is very important in Greece. Not bottom up. In Greece, adult education was not created by the dynamic within civil society. As a result, the importance, habit, and practice of adult education have not been strongly embedded in the collective consciousness, neither in the perception of the political forces. As a result, the dynamic of the popular education movement gradually faded. Accordingly, within a short time, instrumental 
low quality continuing vocational training dominated the field. So, taking into account all this, which could be the challenges for Larissa Learning City? Larissa, who wishes to be a learning society and develop extensive and emancipatory actions of learning, may have to overcome many, many obstacles that regard the lack of interest in adult education and the traditionally low quality of the educational activities that are offered. Programs of Larissa Learning City that include the philosophy the principles and the methodology of transformative adult education should be offered and should respond to the needs of the adult population, especially the marginalized. Learning programs should function as focal points where people can meet, communicate, learn, participate in dialogical processes and thereby perceive and challenge problematic assumptions, and so become more self-reliant, open to others, receptive, receptive to diversity, and interested in learning and public affairs. In particular, the challenge for adult educators in Larsa should be to encourage and enable learners, particularly those from socially vulnerable groups, to become more self-reliant so that they may eventually take their own way to critically engage with the subject matters at hand. In doing so, learners might become increasingly capable and willing to participate in educational processes, become more open to new perspectives, as well as become more critically reflective. So finally, and accordingly, the learners could become aware of the cultural factors and social conditions that inhibit their development, and they become empowered to participate in society as active citizens and learners. Thank you. I stop here and I give the floor to Dimitris Deligianis, who will, who will present Larissa's vision and learning activities. Thank you very much for uh, your invitation. Uh, good morning. Uh, I'm here to share with you, as Alexis said, uh, some uh, uh, comments about uh, resistances and uh, good practices. Uh, our city's efforts uh, to transform uh, the crisis uh, in an opportunity for change, uh, for society's transformation uh, uh, through learning. Uh, as Alex said, uh, Larissa is not a large one city. It's a city uh, of uh, 200,000 uh, inhabitants uh, in central Greece, uh, known from uh, the ancient uh, years. And uh, our first ancient theater uh, situated in the center of the city is a symbol of uh, our democracy, reminding the citizens of the importance to actively protect, protect its uh, basic uh, uh, principles. Uh, but uh, I must remember always that uh, uh, modern Larissa, our Larissa, is uh, facing uh, today uh, lots of problems, uh, lots of uh, challenges. Uh, we have to deal fast and effectively with the huge problems caused uh, by COVID-19 and uh, now by war of, U of uh, Ukraine. At the same uh, time, through the last uh, 10 years, Lysa is facing, uh, as you know, uh, as so many cities all over Europe, uh, financial problems, refugees and earthquake crisis, domination of fear and anger, the rhetoric of ever-growing hate, 
and of course uh, racism and uh, the rise of non-Nazi parties, as we see, see in so many co uh, communities. Uh, Noam Chomsky in uh, 2017 has long warned that uh, the world has taken a path that threatens democratic normality. And uh, the great German philosopher Habermas in 2012, before uh, crisis, refers to the democratic deficit of uh, modern uh, Europe. In a time of uh, crisis, as he said, additional social cultural barriers further inhibit in citizens participation in meaningful dialogue within a local community. Uh, there is a question. Is smart city a solution, the idea of smart city a solution to urban problems and an alternative uh, to austerity? In so many uh, cities all over the world, in Europe, uh, smart city technologies are enthusiastically seen as a solution to urban problems and as an alternative to austerity. Many plans of our cities are often ambitious in aiming to tackle health and safety challenges, improve uh, transportation and uh, reduce the environmental uh, impact of uh, our cities. But uh, as uh, we see, as we said, uh, the great uh, challenge is to mobilize civil society, to mobilize uh, the citizens. Democratic dialogue at all levels, with uh, answers to questions, as Freire says, a different reading of uh, reality and uh, the beginning of change with uh, social consensus. So, uh, as uh, Alexis said, we try to change the environment, uh, to find new solutions. In 2015, in the heart of the Greek economic and social crisis, Larissa became the first Greek city, member of the UNESCO Global Lagging Cities Network. In uh, this period, uh, from 2015 to 2019, dozens of workshops, three international conferences, educational programs and innovative actions targeting specific social groups were organized. And I must say that this process and choice is not politically neutral. It has a political dimension. It, uh, it refers to a course of change that includes the realization of the causes of a social crisis and the search for new balances, sometimes involving uh, conflicts. Uh, we speak uh, uh, about uh, the challenge of change. It, it is not so easy, something like this. Because, uh, uh, as uh, uh, Alexis mentioned, the problems are not lacking. Uh, limited resources, suspicion, doubts are issues we are often called to face. What emerged from the first uh, moment uh, were uh, complex bureaucratic procedures and the chronic problems of the services and structures of the city. And of course, the culture of Greek cities, of Greek communities. We had to face uh, the absence of culture of collaboration in combination with uh, the lack of civilized experiences at the level of local government in the country, the non-existence of a department re responsible for lifelong learning issues in our municipalities, so common in our uh, cities, in, cities in our uh, municipalities, and of course, the, the general lack of experienced staff with knowledge of the basic principles of uh, adult education. So we had to set priorities, to find new conditions 
uh, in uh, our situation. The UNESCO, the UNESCO texts on the cities participating in uh, the Legacy Cities Network set these uh, conditions. Uh, UNESCO texts uh, speak about uh, uh, strong political will and commitment of the authorities of a city, about involvement of all interested parties, about mobilization and utilization of resources. Our political will, the political will of the municipal authority was expressed by establishing a committee of bodies under the spices of the municipal council. More than 90 representatives of institutions and services of the municipality. It, it is a, a large number for us. Citizens and experts participated in the work of this community committee and the name of this committee was uh, Larissa Elegant City. The increase of actions and the first positive results highlighted the need for better planning by utilizing every available resource. So we had some first changes. The first changes were planned at the uh, level of organization of the municipality, uh, who are uh, 22 new, new structures, mainly in the fields of education and social policy. At the same time, new staff joined uh, the municipality who had experience with similar procedures. But I mentioned that uh, uh, they were mostly on short-term co contracts, and this was uh, a big problem. An integral part of this course was the implementation of interacting uh, training programs, mainly, of course, for the staff of uh, social and educational uh, structures, which were uh, uh, involved with uh, aspects of uh, this pro uh, project, of these uh, uh, efforts uh, to make, uh, to, to build a learning city. Uh, progress was uh, made with the continuous involvement of organizations in a series of collective actions. In uh, this period, uh, 2015 to 2019, before the pandemic, the municipality organized conferences, as I said, educational programs and actions aimed uh, especially at, uh, vulner uh, at uh, vulnerable uh, social groups. Uh, I would mention, I would mention the emergence of the refugee crisis and the choice of the city to support uh, 2,000 refugees uh, who were in our area, the cooperation with the disability movement and the creation of uh, new structures, uh, the operation of a municipal uh, white taxi for free transportation of citizens with mobility problems, and the creation uh, of uh, book production studios uh, for the visually impaired. Uh, new actions as uh, summer camp in the city for our uh, children uh, in uh, the summer. Uh, parent schools for families. Programs for uh, third age. Our effort to create an educational community for Roma people with elements of uh, uh, holistic intervention, and of course the operation of a new innovative institution, the Citizens University, which highlighted the strong commitment to support uh, this project, without, however, always being understood by the citizens, even uh, them uh, among those who uh, participate in the actions of the learning city. This is very common uh, in our cities. We have uh, to, uh, to create a new environment. It is not so easy. Uh, about the Citizens University of Larissa, I would uh, to mention that in October of uh, 2017, our major, Apostolos Kalogiannis, announced uh, this new local institution. The title, Citizens University uh, of the Institution, underlines its political and social dimension. 
Its purpose is uh, to provide organized learning sites for all the citizens of Larissa, to end learning sites, language courses uh, for uh, refugees and immigrants, disability awareness program for municipal councillors and services, computer courses for the third age, the training of teachers for the use of art in education, so useful in the days of uh, pandemic. Of course, uh, the nomination of our city as a global coordination of the network of uh, learning cities in the field of uh, active citizenship uh, education. In September of 2019, uh, in Medellin, uh, in the International Conference of UNESCO, created new priorities, but the outbreak of the COVID pandemic affected our efforts, created new challenges. Many deficits of the uh, educational programs came uh, to the surface, uh, while uh, we had uh, to find solutions because uh, so many children had uh, no access to education uh, in the practice. I speak about uh, uh, Roma uh, children and uh, the refugee children. Many educators, many uh, members of our staff were disappointed, believed uh, that uh, nothing uh, can change. Uh, so, uh, we had uh, to create a new environment. We had uh, to find uh, new educational activities, to create new bodies, and to find uh, how we can uh, speak, how we can uh, transform our city uh, as uh, a city sustainable, uh, as a, a city uh, resilient. Uh, after uh, the first period of uh, stagnation, the Citizens University began to organize online discussions, focusing uh, on the new reality of the COVID-19 era. In a new online environment, with the involvement, of course, of a group of staff of, of the municipality, which had to quickly adapt to the new situation, learning cycles were organized to support the, the, the educational of the city in distance education. Uh, we had to create online parent schools, online health education programs on healthy cities, and of course, uh, to create a new environment to support uh, uh, our uh, elderly uh, generation. We had some new three uh, new bodies uh, by decision of the municipal council uh, was created the municipal youth council. The council was established with the aim of educating the active and democratic uh, citizens. We want the voice of youth. A new committee for gender equality, and of course. Uh, immigrant and the Refugee Integration Council uh, uh, established an advisory body working towards the strengthening of the integration of migrants and the refugees in our uh, local community. Uh, and now uh, I could uh, uh, say a lot about uh, our civil war, uh, how uh, about our decision uh, for uh, our uh, urban uh, landscape. The city turned to sustainable mobility policies with new bike lines in the days of pandemic and neighborhoods turning into light traffic. Of course, uh, uh, I could mention that the, the, men the difficulties of the, this project that limits speed and gives space for walking and cycling came into conflict with traditional beliefs and uh, attitudes and all policies on the strengthening uh, the use of cars, so common uh, for our cities. The, develop the development of uh, 
new traffic education programs for all levels of education uh, targeting uh, different social groups and the strengthening of uh, uh, democratic uh, public dialogue are here uh, essentially a difficult political choice for a learning society that can and does survive when educated the, the changes. Some photos of these programs with children, with the members of our society, uh, members of uh, vulnerable groups. So, uh, if uh, we have to, 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 to speak about uh, challenges and future steps, I would mention uh, uh, the most important lesson. Urban sales, including the city's desire to become a healthy and resilient city, must facilitate uh, uh, active citizenship, social inclusion, and learning opportunities for all. The pandemic has shown uh, this new understanding of the importance of government and local government and the way the system responds to crisis. Economic and refugee crisis, the war, the approaching cl climate uh, crisis and any future crisis that may come and a more serious existential uh, threat uh, to our planet. And it is a learning task for our cities to continue to move forward, to be more uh, resilient, more healthy. It supports a view that uh, the core value of a learning and healthy city's identity is democracy, which is a way uh, to living uh, all together. Thank you very much for your attendance. Uh, <clears throat> Okay, thank you both Alexis and Dimitris for your uh, presentations. We have some questions for you. We will start uh, with uh, one question that to my understanding is addressed to Alexis Kokos. And it's, um, it's a very interesting question. And uh, because Alexis Kokos, be, be, besides being a university professor and uh, scientific responsible for Larissa, uh, Larissa's project, uh, he was also a member of the a team that actually developed popular education in Greece. And so he has a very long experience about the influence of central government into uh, decisions about uh, uh, adult education, uh, local development, and so far. So the first question for you, Alexis, is uh, what do you think is the role of central political authorities, the government, in other words, in this kind of initiatives in uh, this kind of uh, goals? Uh, should the central government uh, be more involved or uh, should, do you think that uh, local uh, governments like municipalities or even regional authorities should take the responsibility? Alex, the microphone is also closed. Yeah, I think, thank you for it. It's a very good question. Uh, well, tra traditionally, and until nowadays, the, the whole system of adult education and training in Greece is very centralized. Perhaps it is the most centralized system in, in Europe. That means that all the power and the budget is in the hands of the, the central uh, political, let's say, forces, the ministries, ministries and general secretaries. Very, very few uh, budget and responsibilities belong to the local government. So to tell the truth, the local government, if, it wants to create a learning city, has to trust its own forces. Very few help will be from the central state because the central state has its own goals, its own centralism, etc. So it's, it's a delicate question, of course, and I understand very well the difficult position of my very good friend, uh, Dimitris Telianis. 
But as far as I understand, as far as I am informed, as a person who is involved in Larissa's uh, um, project, I have not seen much help or support or encouragement from the central state. Yes, thank you, Alexis. It, uh, what Alexis Kokos just said is a reality. Greece has one of the most centralized systems. It's not like the Nordic countries. It's not like some of the countries of Central Europe uh, in Greece, uh, and also in other countries like uh, Romania, for example, or uh, Bulgaria, or um, other places. Uh, we are dependent on central funding. But as Alexis very well said, if you need to do something in your place, you better um, you better develop it based on your own power, on your own budget. Otherwise, it's very difficult for something to happen. Thank you very much, Alexis. Dimitris, the next question is for you. And uh, it's about the, 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 the period of the refugee crisis and the pandemic. The question that you may read also in the chat is whether the level of input from local citizens uh, into the initiatives changed. In other words, the, during this period, did the citizens of Larissa gain more participatory input in uh, the way your, your your city was developed? This period was not so easy. Uh, this was uh, uh, only uh, ten municipalities uh, decided, made the decision uh, to support. Uh, refugees and migrants, uh, I think, uh, in uh, our uh, uh, country. Uh, and uh, it was uh, very difficult uh, to understand uh, how you can create a new environment to find balances between local community and uh, your uh, decision uh, to support the refugees and migrants. Uh, as I uh, mentioned uh, before, uh, we had uh, about uh, uh, 2,000 refugees in a camp about 24 kilometers uh, from uh, the center of the town. Uh, we had uh, to create uh, a new network uh, with uh, other uh, institutions, uh, members of our society, uh, citizens uh, to support uh, uh, to support them and uh, it was something like a commitment uh, to our uh, values to our traditional values for hospitality and uh, what is uh, exactly a progressive society uh, all this uh, we learned a lot from this uh, we understood that uh, you must uh, uh, hear the citizens, you must hear them uh, in, uh, the, in uh, the days of crisis, of uh, uh, financial crisis, uh, because uh, we had both social uh, financial crisis uh, for our citizens and, uh, of course, refugee crisis uh, for, uh, for them. But uh, uh, as uh, we know now, if you didn't find uh, uh, balance, if you didn't hear the citizens uh, who have, uh, they, they have fear, uh, they have, uh, uh, they, 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 they don't uh, understand uh, how we can support when we have problems in our city, in our society, and why you have this commitment. If you didn't, didn't have, if you don't have answers for these questions, you didn't find any balance. But I think that we had a success. So many citizens, after uh, five or six uh, years, understood uh, uh, our decision, and now we, they support us. But uh, uh, the first days, the first months, uh, we uh, knew 
that uh, we lose votes, but it wasn't uh, the first uh, priority for us. Okay. Uh, so common, uh, George. Yes, it is common <laughs> uh, everywhere in, uh, in the world, I think. Uh, so if uh, anyone else has any question and wishes to uh, ask our uh, friends here, uh, you may now raise your hand or I can make a question to both of you. I would like to, I, actually, I would like to ask a question to both of you. And so this may start the discussion for even more questions. My question is this. We all know that in, in Europe, we, there is a discussion about the level and the quality of democracy, especially after uh, recent uh, political results uh, in, in certain European countries, there is a discussion about the Euroscepticism that is now uh, arising in Europe even with even greater force. And uh, in general, the level of uh, democratic, the level of the quality, the quality of democratic processes in uh, in in all European countries. So my question is this: uh, Do you think that initiatives like the one that happened in Larissa uh, is actually uh, contributing to the advancement of what we understand as democracy, or in other words, the participation of people in the uh, development of their own city. Alexis, you may start and then Dimitris will take over. Thank you, George. Also, your question is linked with uh, another question I saw on the chat. Uh, and the question was uh, whether citizens gain more participatory input uh, in life, etc. It's the same thing. So um, I, I think this is a, there is a progress. Of course, we cannot wait for uh, miracles, but it is, there is a clear progress in these uh, six years of the function of Lars uh, Learning City. Uh, let me give you a, a very concrete um, uh, example. Uh, first of all, Dimitris already um, referred to the, the very important development of institutions. For example, the Municipal Youth Council, uh, there are only two or three local authorities in Greece that have uh, councils of youth. Eh? Larissa is one of them. Also, the very important immigrant and refugee integrate, integration council, etc. But let me give you a very concrete example from my experience. Uh, five years ago, in the first meetings of uh, institutions that participate in uh, Larissa Learning City, all the participants used the word I. I have a project. My organization has a project. We do this thing. That means the, the organization in which the person belongs. We noticed five years later in this kind of meetings, uh, we, we together with others, we try to do something. We have a common project. It is very, very clear. If we had a magnetophone, we, I think we have to record someday this kind of meeting because it's very clear um, proof that yes, the culture of um, participation and uh, of course the, the quality of democracy behind it uh, has done quite clear steps in, in life. That, that's very important. Dimitri, please also, because I, I would like to also, after Alex's opinion, uh, also your opinion from, from your point of view. Uh, excuse me, and, and, and the last thing here that, that shows the climate, it, it, it is the titles that the large learning city, city uses, as it does, for example, the, how we call, the, the, the lessons or the, the courses. The title is Learning Cycles. It's, it's not by accident. It's, it's not a course. It is not a, a kind of program, a lesson. It is a cycle. That means people, uh, as you saw in the, in the pictures, people sit all around uh, in the Ferrarian uh, tradition and uh, discuss, really discuss, in a kind of cycle of how we sit 
And of course, how we, in a, in a, in a, in a spiral way, we approach all the aspects of the, of the issue. And also, it is not by accident the title of the university. It is not an academia of learning, etc., as it is uh, the famous uh, and dominant uh, title in, in other Greek cities. It is the citizens' university. It's a university that belongs to the citizens, and, and, and it works for them and with them. Uh, as Alexis said, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, learning city must not is not a logo. Uh, it's not a, uh, uh, it is a, a, a project. Uh, our efforts to construct and support uh, our ident identity uh, uh, of uh, our city as a learning community. And uh, the, the need, it is uh, crucial to overcome a, a difficult uh, social reality with new structures, new institutions, the formation of uh, uh, communication channels and synergies with institutions and the citizens. So uh, we must have a, a, an holistic approach. It is not so easy. Uh, we have to, uh, to, to overcome our uh, uh, traditional uh, culture. And uh, on the other hand, it is a common finding uh, that uh, when a health, ki health crisis uh, occurs, we are forced to learn so many things. Uh, in a very short time. Uh, our idea, uh, our uh, uh, texts uh, uh, says, say that uh, the concept of uh, the learning city uh, and the, its holistic approach is a, a different uh, political proposition. It's a, a, a political issue to be a learning city, to be more democratic. If you are not democratic, you are not learning city, as uh, 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 Peter Z uh, Jarvis said. It is uh, now our uh, obligation to create as citizens uh, within a democratic uh, community and uh, uh, the conditions for a sustainable life uh, uh, consistently. Uh, Recognizing, of course, uh, the basic uh, principles for, uh, for that uh, permit the social democratic conditions of what we can call the good life, since, uh, as uh, Adorno put, uh, puts it, it is not possible to live a good life in a bad life. This is very essential in the days of crisis, in the days of war, in the days of uh, uh, health crisis. We have to find uh, these new conditions. We have uh, to insist on this, and uh, uh, of course, uh, uh, we have to to, uh, to to do this uh, step by step. It is so difficult, but uh, this is uh, something uh, very. Uh, it is for our future. Without this, we have no future, I think, and this is uh, what we gained in the days of. Uh, of a crisis. Very well, thank you, Dimitris. Uh, I'm, I don't see any other questions in the chat. I wonder if there is any other question from our participants. I see people from Germany, from DVV, from the Varasdin County, from uh, the Norwegian Association. I wonder how do they perceive all these things? Would you like or from uh, EA are uh, all no 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 further questions like we have uh, a raised hand George okay Excuse me, Tina. Um, we have Mr. Raushan Barato from DVV International that raised his hand. Okay, sure, please. Yes, yes. 
Thank you, Mr. Uh, Barato. Please go ahead. Yes, hello. Uh, can you hear me? Uh, good, yes. Uh, um, uh, it was a very interesting presentation. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to, uh, uh, to attend it from the beginning on, but uh, as much as I heard, it is very interesting. And I know uh, my colleagues from uh, AIR also um, facilitated me in participating in this presentation. And also uh, we've been lucky to invite uh, Mr. Dirigianis uh, to our conference in Moldova. I'm, I am uh, from uh, DVB International Eastern Neighborhood, which is uh, covering Ukraine and Moldova at the moment, but also we have a regional uh, project, uh, which also includes uh, South Caucasian uh, countries and uh, two countries of the Balkan. And um, we will have a future conference on uh, adult education centers in, um, in cooperation with local communities. And of course, uh, this example of the Larissa Citizens University is, is very much in this direction. And of course, I think this will be very interesting for our partners from the countries, from the other adult education centers. Uh, to see the presentation, uh, to talk to Dimitris. And uh, I also think uh, what you were saying that uh, unfortunately, national authorities on the national on the state level are very much um, unflexible when it comes to, you know, to react to the recent developments in the communities, to react to um, um, to situations like the pandemic or uh, dealing with refugees or dealing with vulnerable groups of populations because those are the, the local communities and organizations working with the local communities who see uh, the necessity immediately and they don't have to wait for the approval of funds and so on to act. Uh, this is why I think it, it is very crucial to have such organizations and the network on the ground to be able to react immediately. And then, of course, work together with, with national authorities, with, with state organizations to have more support. Because I think the political support is, is very much what is needed from uh, governmental organization on the national level. Could, could you maybe, uh, Mr. Dilianis and also uh, Mr. Kokos, uh, explore on this, if um, the authorities on the national level have been able to support you on the political level or with infrastructure, for example, maybe something like in-kind contributions to your project? Okay, so uh, thank you, Mr. Balatov, and I, I hope that Dimitris and Alexis, why not, may also be part of your conference and present uh, these cases. Uh, so the question is whether, uh, okay, financial support is not in the game, but whether political support is in the game from the central government, whether the central government actually supports your ideas, but not with money, but maybe with infrastructure or in-kind participation, or even, let's say, a statement that you're doing something important. Uh, let's start with Dimitris this time, and then we will go to Alex. There is a big difference to, between the financial support and political support. Uh, they didn't uh, stop us. They didn't support us. <laughs> uh, we understand that uh, it is something uh, new. We have to create a new environment. We have to find balances in our community, in our local community. I'm not so sure that uh, uh, it is uh, so easy to understand what exactly is uh, a learning community. Uh, our uh, culture, uh, as Alex uh, mentioned, uh, it is uh, very far away from uh, something like this. Uh, but uh, I'm not uh, so disappointed. Uh, I think that uh, uh, some uh, good results, some good practices, uh, are uh, so uh, obvious and uh, I uh, could
could mention that uh, uh, our uh, community, Greek community, I think it's uh, the third one uh, in uh, the network of uh, Latin cities uh, of UNESCO. Uh, so I understand I, uh, that uh, uh, it is not so easy uh, to create this uh, new culture, not in Greece, all over Europe, all over the world. Uh, we are in the start. Uh, we, have, we know the principles of adult education and lifelong learning. Uh, we have to support uh, vulnerable groups and we have to find solutions uh, to, and the answers uh, to our uh, questions. But it's not so easy. Uh, so we want uh, alliance, we want uh, to find the authorities that they support us. Uh, and uh, I think uh, your community, the, the community of, uh, uh, of uh, your organization is uh, too helpful in this uh, direction. Okay, Alexis, your uh, view about uh, whether the political support uh, is crucial or what do you think? It depends on how we understand the political support. If it is a support that, uh, okay, gives some, uh, some responsibilities and some money, but in the way that the central state, state understands the, the learning city, then we have again a problem. That means that if the central state supports economically, etc., but on the same time asks to the local government to, to obey, let's say, to its rules and, uh, and consumptions, then we have a problem. Uh, if the political support is that, okay, we support economically, etc., but we, we really leave the local authorities to take real responsibilities according to their own needs, then yes, we, we need the political support. Uh, George, may, may, may I respond to, uh, to something I see in the chat as regards the, again, the the active uh, citizenship, etc. Uh, I think what uh, Dimitris uh, uh, said regarding the, the three interconnected uh, goals of uh, Learning City, uh, action citizenship, active citizenship, social inclusion, and learning opportunities is, is the key issue. Learning City is not just uh, a learning with a traditional uh, conception uh, activity. It's not just to, to, to offer courses or... It, it is, of course, also this, but it, it is only one point of the, of the whole. On the same time, the effort for the social inclusion should be very intensive. And on the same time, uh, the quality of participation in, in, in learning is very important. Let me, let me give you an example and I, I finish with it. Uh, as you, you heard, uh, Larissa got the very uh, important uh, initiative to create walking areas. Okay. Uh, the point is how we can link the practice of walking area, that means we, we want people to, of course, to, 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 to take profit from all these uh, measures, but on the same time, to make it a, a learning opportunity for people to learn and understand why it is important for us to, to, to have the, the, the walking areas, because you understand there are many resistances from the small enterprises, etc., that we, we do not want the, the working areas. That means that, um, for example, uh, the responsibles of the Larissa Learning City, they say, okay, we will create small groups of active observation. That means small groups 
who will go and systematically observe for two, three hours what is happening in a walking area. How people enjoy or not enjoy the walking area. How the communication between them is intensified because they participate in a walking area. See? So this link between learning, uh, conscious development on things, and uh, practice of inclusion and um, active citizenship, it, there are uh, uh, actions that are interlinked and give in the end of analysis the, the, the quality, the, the global quality of the project. And, and I, 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 I wouldn't adopt the, the title smart city. Smart city uh, refers to technology. Okay, we use technology and that's why we make life better, etc. Of course, we do not uh, deny technology. We need technology in a human way. But it's not, it is not, as Dimitri said, it is not only this. It is also learning, it is participation, it is democracy, it is uh, conscious raising. There are many other things, not only technology. Okay. Uh, Andres uh, Lopez, yes, there's a question from, uh, there's no name there, it's only the device that the question was written. It says, uh, um, I'm not going to make, uh, to, to repeat it because it's going to be advertisement for the device. But there's a question about, uh, and that may, Dimitris may also read it and see if he can respond. In the meantime, Andres uh, Lopez from the Norwegian Association has raised his hand. So Andres, uh, first of all, thank you for being here with us from your esteemed organization. And uh, please, uh, yes, we would like to hear your question or your remarks. Thank you, George. And uh, yes, uh, I was thinking a little, a little bit about uh, this uh, youth councils. Uh, in Norway, uh, the youth councils are required by law in every municipality, which is a very, very good tool for the democracy uh, among youth people. Uh, in, in my case, uh, I'm a political involved in my municipality and we have a very good and very close relation to, to them. Um, so my, my, my question is, uh, I, I hear that uh, it's a few, or maybe <laughs> only Larissa, the only municip municipality that uh, um, has a youth council. So, so my, my question is, what are the main obstacles for that? In, in, my, in, in my head, it's, uh, it's so easy. <laughs> in my head, it's, uh, it's so including uh, and should be a, a, a must uh, in the democratic process of our society. But, but it's because maybe I grew up with that. <laughs> this is difficult to, to, to understand that. So, so my, my question is, what are the main obstacles to, to, to get up uh, at that council? Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Dimitris? Yes. Uh, only uh, seven cities, uh, seven municipalities in Greece, uh, in Greece have a uh, uh, municipal youth uh, council. Uh, it, uh, it is obvious uh, that this, it is something uh, very difficult to create. I'm not so sure uh, that uh, uh, it is so difficult because uh, nobody wants to be a member of this uh, council. Uh, uh, it is uh, so uh, common uh, that uh, the municipalities uh, don't understand uh, how useful is uh, their uh, voice. How, uh, how useful is uh, the voice of uh, uh, our uh, new generations. Uh, because if, if you uh, support as municipality uh, a new body, advisory body, as uh, uh, our uh, city uh, council for youth, uh, you can uh, uh, have uh, your, your strength uh, a culture of uh, cooperation between them uh, and uh, 
uh, you create the basis uh, uh, for the organization of new actions with an expanding uh, circle of uh, participants. And this is uh, very useful for us. Uh, it is very basic if you want to create a new environment. Uh, in uh, our city, uh, this led uh, to the organization in uh, September of uh, 2021, 20, uh, uh, the first uh, festival of uh, youth and lifelong learning, and uh, in uh, June, uh, the second one. So uh, it is uh, very useful. Uh, I understand uh, that uh, so many colleagues uh, uh, in uh, municipalities uh, don't understand uh, uh, how useful this is. Uh, but uh, if you want a learning community, you can't create something new without them. So, so simple. <laughs> Yes. Uh, uh, allow me to say also something. Um, only seven municipalities, and keep in mind that in Greece there are 332 municipalities right now. In the past, there was an effort to make a law, let's say, a provision, a legal provision, a law provision to, to establish institutions. Again, it, it, it failed. The big problem for me, because we also we developed a municipal council in, in my municipality, uh, is that there is a, a mistrust from the young people towards the political, uh, the political authorities. They don't think, they don't believe, and this is why, this is because what Alexis just said, because the Greek government in general is very centralized not decentralized. They do not believe that their voice is actually something that makes a difference. So it's up to the local authorities to make sure that they do not only create a youth council, but they are actually exploiting within quotation marks the voice of the young people for the development of the city. If the local authorities have this idea, then the youth, youth councils will flourish. But in a centralized system, that like the one that Alex described, it's very difficult uh, for the young people to gain this trust against uh, the local and, and central authorities. This is the big problem for me. Uh, Maria, what you... May I add, uh, George, something? Of course. It is not only that the system is centralized. It is also that each minister changes the policy of the ex-minister, even in the framework uh, of minister, the government. Yes. After so the change of the government. On, on the other way, there is no continuity. Of policy. Yes, there is no, no continuity of measures. Yes, yes, yes. This is this is true. I mean, every time we, we see a governmental change, there is a whole new uh, discussion. There is no continuity like it, like the one that happens in the northern country, in the uh, Nordic countries, where there is a continuity in specific uh, provisions of law. Now, Maria Bocci also uh, said something about: uh, Can you? Can you name, and this is maybe the last question because we are, close, we are coming to the end of the webinar, which I think it's, it's very successful. Uh, could you think, or could, could you please, uh, Dimitri, this mainly is for you and also for Alexis, but could you think of, of, uh, of a learning group that really stand, stand out uh, uh, from your uh, effort and really make, made a difference? And could you please say, Think of some characteristics. All these efforts you have done, you have done many different things. Are you able to identify, let's say, a learning group that really took over the opportunity that you gave them and made a difference? And what are the characteristics of the people that participate in this group? I could mention third dates. Third dates, yes. Why third not? dates. Yes, uh, yeah, yes they have uh, some uh, different. Uh, uh, characteristics. Uh, they have uh, different, uh, they, they want new opportunities uh, uh, in an environment that uh, never gives them anything uh, because uh, uh, so many uh, leaders of municipalities uh, uh, had uh, some ideas that uh, they, they didn't want anything. They are in the end of their life. But uh, uh, we created uh, this new environment. We give them, gave them opportunities uh, uh, to, to hear stories, uh, to create stories. 
ε, του learn ε, ε, computer and ε, to be ε, ready ε, for the days of the pandemic. It was very, very useful for them to be members of our community. Uh, they created uh, uh, when they had the chance uh, the uh, teams uh, teams uh, they were members of team uh, for uh, 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 for theater uh, for music uh, for art uh, and uh, they uh, were they had so strong belief for a second chance uh, uh, for uh, new activities. Uh, I, th I believe to them. I think that uh, th this is very, there is a big difference between uh, our idea for them and what it really happens. And I uh, see in this in uh, my family with the example of my father. He is 92 years old. He was an old uh, professor, uh, an, old, an old teacher, but uh, there was a big gap between uh, him and uh, the challenge of new technologies. Now, his idea is that he's a member of our society. Uh, and uh, he covered his, this uh, gap and he really understands so many uh, things of our uh, new uh, reality. And it is very essential for him and uh, his uh, colleagues. Uh, okay, thank you, Dimitris. It's, uh, it's now uh, 23 minutes past uh, 12. We have uh, seven more minutes to go ahead. Maybe one more question if someone wishes to, to say something or a statement. Um, Mr. Bagakis, yes, please. Just make it short because we have only three minutes. Few positive comments. That's all. I heard many interesting things about obstacles. We have discussed them with Dimitris many times and we know them very well. Uh, I come from another learning city from, from uh, Corinth, who recently entered to the network. But I would like to mention few positive things uh, as well, with all the positive things that the previous uh, uh, presenters mention. I think the cities who are uh, in the network of UNESCO, they have, first of all, a formal organization with them, and that's important. Second, in the culture of Greece and in the political, with the political power, uh, powers of Greece, that everything is top-down, it's, it's a peculiar chance to reverse the direction. We start exactly in the opposite way, in a bottom-up way, and we try to liberate powers in a city. And we don't wait always the help, which is very important from the central government, but it's a, it's a way to reverse the direction. For example, I can compare with South Korea, for example, with 60 cities in the network, which means there is political support in this. It's not the, initi the initiatives of few uh, cities as it is in Greece. And I mentioned very much the idea of network, this exchange of ideas in the city and with other cities. This is a positive and very, very positive thing. And the last, I, I, I heard many, uh, many ideas and many experiences, particularly from Dimitris, from Larissa and from Alexis, 
And uh, I think an important point that we have to elaborate is to find methods and tools to liberate the power of stakeholders in our city to find ways. It could be a, a conference, it could be a festival, it could be some of the things that uh, Dimitris described. That's a stake, I think, and we have to work on it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, also, Mr. Baragis, uh, who represents the municipality of Corinth. And I think uh, we are coming to an end. Um, it was a very interesting uh, presentation from both uh, Professor Alex Kokos and Dimitris Yaligianis about their engagement uh, with Larissa and their success in uh, creating uh, uh, the Larissa's project. I call it, they call it Larissa as the Latin city. Um, we had recently a study visit and many uh, people were able to see uh, Larissa's progress towards uh, these goals. And uh, everything is described on the website of Regale, which I just uh, wrote down in the chat for you to visit. And Tina, thank you very much for uh, adding to my, to my small uh, remark there, more websites and uh, how to follow the webinars. Um, if you have any questions about the Regale project, Tina Mavrich, who is the project manager from EAEA, who is the leader organization, you may send her an email and I'm sure by knowing Tina that she will respond immediately and uh, with, uh, with, uh, very, with prompt replies. And I would like also to thank Alexis Kokos for uh, being with us today. I would like to thank Dimitris Deligianis for being with us today. I would like to thank Katarina Paleologu for organizing it. And I would like to thank all of you. Uh, we were many, uh, 30 to 40 people uh, were in the, uh, participating in the webinar. It's Monday, it's Monday morning. Don't forget that it's not an easy day. It's not Friday afternoon or Saturday, which is more easy. It's Monday morning, so I consider this a success, Tina. I don't know what do you think. And um, I hope that uh, more people will be involved in this project, not only Larissa, but also in other cities. Uh, thank you very, very much. It was a very interesting morning. I hope that uh, whatever ideas were expressed here will become the basis for future development, not only in Greece, but also in other places as well. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much, George. Tina, Katerina, thank you very much for your support.